Welcome to Reversing Hashimoto's show. I am your show host Dr. Anshul Gupta, the world expert in Hashimoto's disease. I help people reverse their thyroid conditions by making personalized functional medicine plans. You can work with me with any part of the country now by making virtual functional medicine appointments. To book an appointment, look at the show notes. In this show, I am going to get experts from all over the world. who are going to share latest information that will help you to reclaim your life back from dreadful thyroid disease so welcome here and we have today with us lovely Rachel Verga welcome over here Rachel thank you for having me it's great to be here i'm really excited to talk about all things non toxic clean skin care beauty rejuvenation slowing aging and all of that fun stuff Absolutely it's such an important topic i'm really interested in talking about these things but let me introduce you first to our audience so rachel verga is a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20000 procedures performed an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses celebrity skin expert featured on bulletproof radio ask the health expert podcast with jj warjin Uh, live with Dr. Kelly Ann Petrucci and Naveen Jain and more. Rachel is also a speaker and four-time academically published award-winning author in the field of plastic and aesthetic nursing, as well as an executive board member and peer reviewer for the Plastic Surgical Nursing Journal. Through education on skin care, skin and laser rejuvenation, non-surgical solutions, healing lifestyle, and biohacking practices. Rachel helps inspire others with her unique toolkit to navigate and strategize aging impossibly well. Using the holistic science of beauty at rachelwerga.ca where one and on one-on-one sessions for at home and in clinic skin rejuvenation are available. Wow, that's definitely amazing. I'm really excited to talk a lot about skin health and how females with hashimotos you know need to know about all the toxins they are getting exposed to in their skin products so please start with like you know telling us more about how toxins in skin products affect hashimotos absolutely i really am happy to be here because i've sort of ruffled the feathers if you will in the aesthetic and rejuvenation industry by sprinkling these seeds we really have to be aware of the toxins in skincare products that we're providing to our clients and also with the rejuvenation procedures as well because there are a number of rejuvenation procedures that are contraindicated if there are thyroid conditions running in the background i primarily work with a number of women sort of in that that menopausal time of their life and and what i found is a lot of my clients work with are are having thyroid issues so the way i like to frame this and actually what i put in my academic papers which thankfully is being very well received in the industry when you bring forth new ways of looking at things safer ways of looking at things things a more conservative ways of looking at things you never quite know how your colleagues will take it but it has thankfully been very well received so i feel very very blessed to be able to spread information that we need to take very special care with what we're putting on our in our bodies and surrounding ourselves with from a body mind spirit energy perspective so the number one ingredient that you need to avoid is actually not one it's several parabens phthalates sulfates artificial dyes fragrances and not tested on not testing on animals and the reason why are those ingredients can add to what's called what i like to call your toxic bucket if we're constantly adding different agents from our air from our food from our water from our beauty products that are adding to this toxic load and you already have underlying thyroid condition running in the background what will happen is that toxic bucket will kind of tip over and that's when you might see a little bit more manifestation of some of your some of your thyroid condition concerns and so by keeping that toxic bucket nice and low that can be a strategy to help to manage your hashimotos and thyroid disease so starting from that toxic bucket analogy and always being very conscious where are you purchasing your products from what are the ingredients in them 
And of course, as we age, we want to make sure that those products are going to not only be clean, but you also want them to deliver the results. So that's where I come in because I work with about 13 different uh, practitioner, medical grade skincare product lines. And it's really important that I'm constantly picking and choosing and in a state of inquiry as what is the best of the best at the time. And I love to be able to listen to my clients' needs and then come up with an at-home routine that's going to work with their budget, lifestyle, their personal values, all sorts of things. So I love holding my clients' hands and making sure that they're able to address things like hyperpigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, loss of collagen and elastin, a little bit of that sagging to the jawline. We see that quite a bit as we age. And I just, I sleep very well at night knowing that I'm able to support my clients in a way that is going to give them the results that they're hoping for with their skin goals and not contribute to their toxic bucket. Wow, you are doing amazing work. You know, like I cannot imagine. There are so many clients of mine, you know, like who always keep on asking me, you know, what products would you have purchased? Which is the best source of non-toxic skin products, you know? And obviously, you know, like as you mentioned, there is not one particular company which produces all the products which are non-toxic. So I'm glad that now I can refer my clients to you kind of saying that, okay, this is your resource. Go to this person. She's going to take care of your skin needs. But, you know, like there was a research study done, right? A couple, like, you know, several years ago, which showed that, you know, a female before she leaves her house in the morning, I don't know, it was like maybe 100 or 200, like toxin or products they use on the skin. Uh, so what was that about? Tell us more. Funny you mentioned that because after my nursing, so I have my bachelor's of science in nursing, I wanted to become either a naturopath or a medical doctor. So I was actually going to a local naturopath school in one of their open houses. And there was a lecturer that was saying just this, when women leave their homes, they're already toxic. And this is something that we're really not trained in as humans, right? We're not always as skeptical as we should be about the information that we're hearing from influencers that are influencing us in ways that might not be in our highest good. And so I heard this, what was that, 11 years ago, that concept. And if you can imagine just how many more toxins are found in skincare now, I'll actually mention just last week, I did a consultation for a lovely nurse practitioner. I actually have a lot of other doctors and nurses booking calls with me. And then what they learn from me, it then has a trickle down effect into their client care. Or if you connect with me, it'll have a trickle down effect into those around you, your children, passing along those healthy living self-care practices. Really important. I actually learned this from my mother at a very young age of 14 when she was a night nurse. She weighed 210 pounds and then she went down to 140. She gave herself to her, her patients, did the shift work. So from a very young age, I learned how to not be a nurse and the emphasis of healthy eating practices. And really, it's not, uh, a lot of us have this, this block around self care. And this is kind of a deeper topic here. And especially uh, those who, who have a spiritual practice, there's this block around, well, looking after the skin is superficial. It's actually not. So this is like a funny program that we have to kind of rework and reframe because the skin is in fact our largest organ and what we put on it and how we care for it has a direct impact on every other organ system, including the thyroid having its own unique functions. And when you mentioned, yes, I work with many different lines, always be skeptical of practitioners that only work with one skincare line. And it's usually going to be like that private label, white label kind of situation. So that's why I really have to pick and choose and make sure that every line that I work with, and I've worked with many of these lines since 2011, have they have duds and superstars. So it's my job to sift through, look at the ingredients, see what actually works, and also make note of what my clients keep coming back for. Now that is very key. That's where my recommendations come from. And I'm just really excited to be getting this information out because 
not a lot of people are talking about just how toxic our skincare and self-care products are. And it's not just your skincare, it's your air quality, it's your water quality, it's the energetic quality in your home. So that's actually this really cool way that this is it's very interesting now, being able to blend the concept of biohacking to make sure that every aspect of your life you're paying attention to. And we kind of need to, in order to counteract all these extra toxins that are actually being put in our self-care products. So that nurse that I did a consult for last week, she's a very smart woman, you know, training in functional medicine, nurse practitioner. One of her moisturizers actually had tin as an ingredient. And then the week before one of my clients had an ingredient called nitrates. Now nitrates, we see this type of ingredient in preserved meats. So what on earth is it doing in skincare? I've seen BPA about a month ago in a client's skincare product from a line that basically you and maybe your children are going to, to get your makeup, a very big uh, company with black and white labels. And it was one of their, their brand and moisturizers. And what I'm seeing in the skincare industry now, unfortunately, with a lot of these over-the-counter products that are marketed as even being luxury is they seem to have agents in there that are actually chemical byproducts. So when I see things like tin, when I see things like nitrates, when I see things like BPA, I've even seen the ingredient DNA in a skincare product. What was that about two months ago? So I actually love to work with my clients, have them tell me what they're using. And then I'll actually go on the back end, look up the ingredients and let them know maybe what they can work through or what they absolutely need to stop using. So I pull from my background in gen chem, organic chem and biochemistry as well to understand what those ingredients are and the potential implications. Absolutely. Um, again, you know, like so many brands are misleading these days, you know, like on top of the brands, they will be like all natural products or not natural ingredients. And as soon as, as you said, you know, like you turn the bottle and several of those ingredients are byproducts, which, you know, again, can be quote unquote natural, but they're definitely chemicals which are disrupting, you know, our body. So it's very important to read those labels. And I'm glad that, you know, you're talking about reading the labels and you're working with your clients to help them understand how to read it. So that's, that's amazing. I love that you brought up natural skincare, but this is something that you all need to know about and deserve to know about. When you see marketing on labels that say natural, clean, eco-friendly, green, chemical-free, those are all marketing tools. And never, you don't have to be afraid of the word chemical, right? Chemical actually isn't a bad thing. The air that I'm breathing is a chemical because it's a combination of a number of different atoms that makes a molecule. And when things become combined, they become a chemical. This water, oxygen and hydrogen is technically a chemical. My coffee is technically a chemical. So don't be afraid when you look at the back of a, of a product and you see things that you can't read or understand because it's all written in like organic chemistry terms we have to be very particular to not write off a product that has something that you can't understand what matters is if that product is toxic for us or not so right away if you see anything that says parabens phthalates sulfates artificial dyes fragrances fragrances can be a, a tricky thing so i actually reach out to the manufacturer and say okay what's in your fragrance it needs to be phthalate free a lot of fragrances like the perfumes that you buy at the um, department stores they're containing phthalates and they're hormone disruptors the last thing we want to do if we're experiencing Hashimoto's or thyroid disease is be contributing again to the toxic bucket with hormone disruptors but sometimes a fragrance can be something like a tea tree oil or citric acid or some type of essential oil that actually isn't nefarious but that fragrance term is is usually a kind of quote-unquote brand and secret in the formulation process. So I kind of do that heavy lifting. So when you see products that are marketed as chemical free, all natural, it really doesn't mean a thing. If it's from planet earth, 
it's considered natural. So petroleum, for example, it's from earth. It could, or tin or nitrates or DNA or all that's uh, BPA. They, they could still be in that. So just watch out for those tricky marketing schemes. They're, they're absolutely everywhere. And the other thing that I find very fascinating is a lot of my clients work with me and they're using really clean, all organic products. Let's say, for example, the moisturizer that I put on my, my skin today has a stable, soluble vitamin C. So when you're making a product, I find that all organic skincare doesn't quite meet the mark for the mature skin needs to be able to resolve things or assist with and, and make a little bit better things like hyperpigmentation. So sunspots, age spots, red acne scars, and actually feed and nourish the skin. Because when you have a, a product like a moisturizer, like that moisturizer put on my skin this morning, the vitamin C has to be kept stable. So in all organic formulations at this time, I'm very optimistic that this will improve in the coming years uh, with chemistry and, and formulations. But I do find that things like retinol, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, they're not actually kept in a stable form in a super clean, all organic product. So you go and put it on your skin and it actually could be creating oxidative stress because that that vitamin c molecule could actually go rancid and become a free radical again that is a very important point i mean you mentioned something about endocrine disruptors and a lot of people actually might not be aware of the term and we know that the toxins are endocrine disruptors so tell us a little bit more about to the audience so they can understand what that actually means absolutely so parabens for example that Phthalates are endocrine disruptors, or they can have some type of mimicking effect. So that's why we don't want to drink out of plastic water bottles with BPA. I was mortified when I saw that BPA in that beauty product ingredient because teens are using this product. It's literally being marketed to young girls. So when we're putting things on our skin, our skin will absorb it. And when they are endocrine disruptors, it's going to be maybe giving your body kind of more estrogen than it should have. And my mother, she developed estrogen receptive breast cancer. So I went to all of her dietary meetings. I went to all of her radiation appointments. And it was very important that she avoid things like lavender, for example, or soy-based products. So you do also want to be careful with soy type of ingredients even in your skincare, because what's happening with a lot of these different agents is they're also genetically modified. <laughs> so who knows what's happening in the background, but there are particular ingredients. It's actually really easy to just look up, say, for example, estrogen receptive breast cancer protocol of different foods and things to avoid. That's a great place to start. But in general, making sure you're always avoiding the parabens, salate, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, not tested on animals. It's a good idea to invest a little bit more into your face, eyelid, neck, chest care for your skincare products. And then maybe for the body care. So for example, I have this amazing pineapple, phthalate free pineapple, I should add. It's super clean. It's a beautiful uh, bath and body oil. You just put it in your tub. You can use it for shaving your legs. You emerge from your tub hydrated head to toe, like a goddess. When it comes to the body products, I do actually like to encourage making your own hand soaps, making your own body soaps, making your own bath salt soaks. But when it also comes to hair care, uh, I do my best to find the cleanest products possible that are still going to deliver salon quality performance results. So it's like a full time job keeping up with everything and constantly being in that state of inquiry as to making sure that the recommendations I'm making for my clients aren't contributing to potential disruption of the endocrine system and hormone dysregulation, especially when we're entering perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause times of our lives. Absolutely. The other thing which I see a lot of my clients asking me this question is that, well, you know, these skin products, you know, are so minimal in quantity and the amount of chemicals in them might be like, you know, in very, very small dosage. That's what my doctors tell me. So, you know, like if I'm putting them on my skin, you know, it's not a big issue. You know, I'm not going to get toxic with them. And you and me know that that is not true. So why don't you share something about that, you know, about how these things accumulate over time and then, you know, that can be causing trouble. So just share a little bit more about that. 
I actually did a recent episode on this on my podcast, the Rachel Varga podcast. You can listen into it anyway. I do a ton of free content, basically do episodes almost every day. And this was a question that I get all the time. And that actually is going back to that concept of we want to make sure that the agents that we're putting on our skin are actually making sure that vitamin C, retinol, hyaluronic acid, those types of antioxidants that help slow our aging process and repair the skin are kept stable. So sometimes things need to be added to make sure that that vitamin C is kept stable and doesn't actually become an oxidant. So that can be an example of how the the outcome is actually really important so that you're not potentially putting an oxidant on the skin. So that's where formulation comes in. It's really important for you to know a lot of the products that I work with that I have worked with since 2011, you might not have even heard of them. And the reason why are those companies don't put a lot of money into marketing. They put their money into research, developing development and formulation. So they're actually making claims on the final formula itself, not, for example, the key hero ingredients. So when you go and look up a beauty product, you're generally going to see like five bullet points of this, this product has hyaluronic acid, this product has vitamin A, this product has green tea extract, this product has vitamin E, this product has HA, BHA, works foliants. And that's not an ingredient list. That's like a hero ingredient list. And we see this a lot with marketing. Then you have to dig quite a bit deeper and then find the actual ingredient list itself. So avoiding those toxins that I refer to, or I do this live for my clients all the time. I, I love doing that because it gives me a sense of, okay, which brands are just like absolutely horrific for their ingredients and which brands maybe you could work through, but maybe we can upgrade to make sure that it's actually addressing the skin concerns that you have. So I'm really excited to see how the skincare formulation um, industry continues to get better and make stable vitamin C and retinol products without having to put things like a stabilizer in there. They do really need to be stabilized. So for example, when I'm talking about aging, the root cause of aging is inflammation. So if you're putting a rancid vitamin C product on the skin, it's actually an oxidant, which means it's actually wanting to bind really quickly with other things that can actually create inflammation on the skin and contribute to oxidative stress in general. There's even supplements that I personally love to take that help to reduce hyperpigmentation, diffuse redness around the nose, diffuse redness around the eyes, puffiness around the eyes. And it can actually make your fine lines and wrinkles appear less deep. So it helps with fine lines and wrinkles and gives this golden glow to the skin. And I actually did some research for this company. Was it about two months ago? I followed eight clients and after about six to eight weeks, same results across the board, less redness, less pigmentation, fine lines looked less, that golden glow because they were less inflamed because it's working on the root cause of aging, which is oxidative stress and inflammation. And then another surgeon on the other side of the country did the same thing, different camera setup, different lighting and saw the exact same results. And this is a company that's been formulating skin supplements for 15 years with multiple third-party independent lab testing. And they have practitioners like me that have been using it for a long time and, and actually do research for them, which is really, really fun because I'm such a nerd. I'm a researcher. I love give me something to research and I kind of do deep dives. Um, so there are some supplements that can help to support the skin from the inside out. It allows me to go outside for a little bit longer and not burn as quickly because my body's better able to manage that oxidative stress, but there's, there's many different points of exposure to toxins in our lives, in our homes, especially with water, air, and electromagnetics in the home. Those are huge. huge. So for me, as a very hypersensitive individual to electromagnetics is something that I have to work really hard on to make sure my home is a safe place for me. Actually, I'm doing a research paper on EMFs and how high exposure to EMFs daily impairs our skin's perfusion or blood flow because our red blood cells aren't functioning properly as like those little donuts. Um, 
when RBCs or red blood cells are flowing appropriately in the vascular system, they'll kind of work like inner tubes and they'll bump off one another, carrying oxygen and nutrients to the tissue like the skin and then taking away toxins. But when we are electromagnetically kind of sick, if you will, the red blood cells will stick together and sort of stack on one another and they won't flow properly. So you'll also get brain fog and all of that. So these are all elements that can actually assist with how you feel with your Hashimoto's to improve energy. And of course, because you're reducing the inflammation in the toxic bucket, you're also going to get better skin from it. Absolutely. I mean, those are like really great trips. I'm definitely looking forward to reading that research article because I also am a believer that EMF caused so much disruption, you know, in each and everyday life. We all know that, you know, they disrupt, you know, the sleep cycle, but I think they're deep down. They again, dysregulates our hormones, you know, causes a lot of oxidative stress, whole bunch of things. So definitely looking forward to that article. Now let's talk about a little bit of hair health because, you know, again, a lot of Hashimoto's patients come to see us because either their hair is falling or hair is thinning. And obviously, you know, they have no idea what to do about it. So if you have any tips or any, any insights about that for our clients. Absolutely. Um, I have been blessed with very thick curly hair, which when I was younger, uh, was, was very difficult and challenging. I actually got made fun of a lot of for my hair because it's very frizzy. I didn't really know what to do with it. And I literally have enough hair for three people. So hair loss has never really been a problem for me, except about two years ago when we were experiencing a little bit more stress in our lives, I was starting to lose my edges and I absolutely was noticing some changes in my hairline. So women tend to lose hair in different ways than men do. We tend to lose it in our edges right here and also sort of in the crown of our head. And I actually identified this in my mother uh, last year. She was really, she I was looking at her from the side and she had quite a bit less hair on her crown. I said, mom, you need to get your thyroid looked at. So that's oftentimes one of the first indicators that something is awry. You're actually noticing changes in your hair. So not to worry. I actually have some wonderful hair care products that I work with that are super clean that help to stimulate hair growth uh, with a very clean shampoo and conditioner, and also with a weekly scalp treatment to stimulate hair growth. There's also options that I work with such as dermal rolling and dermal rolling is very popular. You'll see every influencer on YouTube trying to sell them your, you know, their $20 dermal roller product. That's a 10 to 20 use product. And then you throw it away. Most of the rollers that you're finding online, I should preface this by saying one of the original dermal rolling researchers actually lives in the city where I live. And I'm very chummy with his research assistant. And I've been working with dermal rolling with my clients since 2011. So a lot of times I'll go on YouTube and I'll see people talking about dermal rolling and they're just showing the worst techniques possible. There's a lot of really bad free information available. So with my clients, I discuss if dermal rolling will help address their skin needs and also show them if we're wanting to do scalp treatments with dermal rolling, how to do that in the one-on-one consult. And then I have some skin camp programs where I walk you through applying your products, um, heatless hair care. So literally I wake up with curled hair like this and by reducing our heat styling, we're not going to be damaging our hair as much. And actually with our, with our hair, I like to encourage my clients to spend just as much time as you're looking after your skin. So with your AM and PM routine, like cleansing, moisturizing, and sun protection, you also want to be, you know, doing a scalp treatment, massaging the scalp a little bit and putting different hair oils or products on the hair to kind of feed, nourish it and keep it hydrated. And then I actually wrap it and twirl it so that I kind of get salon curls overnight without having to heat style it. This is really convenient that you can actually style your hair while you're sleeping. So I actually do dermal rolling demos, makeup demos, hair tutorial demos in my skin camp programs. And they're a lot of fun. And with dermal rollers, you want to make sure, and uh, you can actually get these through me and I walk you through how to use it, the right depth and what products to use with it. But dermal rolling is essentially creating a little channel of injury in the skin, much like how we aerate our lawn. And then we put products on like peptides and other things, glutathione, vitamin 
B-complex, hyaluronic acid, lactic acid, all sorts of great ingredients that are proven to be effective with dermal rolling. So they're not only being applied topically, but actually after dermal rolling transdermally about a hundred, 2000 times deeper, there are some other hair stimulating agents that can be applied after dermal rolling to the scalp too, to promote more hair growth. So I'm very familiar uh, with how to re-stimulate hair growth ongoing from home in a very time and cost-effective manner. That is great. You know, I'm sure a lot of people are relieved that they, there is an option or at least something they can do to get those hair back because, you know, it's it's such a big problem. And even, you know, with a lot of my clients, even we're doing a whole bunch of things. Sometimes, you know, their hair do not grow back. So I think, you know, like you have so much to offer them. So that is great. The next thing, you know, you mentioned something about some procedures, especially aesthetic procedures, you know, how they can be toxic and especially for thyroid patients, avoiding those procedures are important. So tell us a little bit more about it so that people are more aware of it. Absolutely. I would say about Five or six years ago, there was a product that was on coming just brand new on the market, and it was to deoxycholic acid to actually dissolve fat cells in the submental area for the double chin, right? And I never had a good feeling about this product. And if I've learned anything in my experience of clinical practice for well over a decade, over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures, you sort of see a lot of these facial rejuvenation, especially things like fillers and biostimulatory injectables into the skin. You have to really make sure that they've been on the market. I've always had this like right from the get-go first couple of years in the rejuvenation space, has this product been on the market for at least seven to eight years to the masses so that we really understand the tissue integration, the final outcome, and of course, safety and efficacy, because the trials can be very quick, but once it's applied to a huge portion of the population, then you really see what's, what's going on. And I've seen all sorts of problems with facial injectables, class action lawsuits, all sorts of things. So my red flags went up right away. There's this new product on the market that promised to get rid of the double chin, deoxycholic acid. And I was, you know, getting educated on the procedure itself. I actually never once administered it to a client. Yes, I was trained on it, but this is not the norm in the aesthetics rejuvenation plastic surgery world to have this type of discernment with products and putting your health first and foremost, because a lot of these procedures, they get get marketed really heavily online. You'll see advertisements on your social media. You'll see these celebrity endorsements. You'll see them on various television networks. They're all paid media. And you'll see this a lot with skincare and all of that, all these devices there. Um, and also even hair, skin, nail supplements. That's paid media. You'll go on the website, you'll see as seen in, you know, this magazine and that TV outlet, those are traditionally paid media. And so with this particular product, uh, one of the contraindications was you can't have it if you have any history of thyroid disease and it's in the close proximity of the thyroid. And that's why, but a lot of practitioners, they just kind of glaze over it. The client might really want it. They're okay with the risks and they do it anyways. So you really have to use your wise discernment and wise discrimination. Your instincts and intuition will pretty well always lead you in the right direction. Um, I don't recommend having rejuvenation procedures, lasers, you know, non-surgical options, body sculpting, surgery, all sorts of things. If you're not feeling well, because your body's trying to tell you that that toxic bucket might be a little bit full, and then you go and add something in it with a little bit of controlled uh, injury, which requires healing, it can kind of tip you over and then you don't feel great. And I've actually, um, I was very happy to see that me putting this type of content in all of my academic papers, which you can find, I have a couple more, I have four in the pipeline right now. You can find my papers at rachelvarga.ca forward slash research. And I do have snippets in there promoting this information, an awareness in the plastic surgery aesthetics industry that we always have to take the overall health into consideration of the client and always put their health first and foremost, especially if there's autoimmune diseases running in the background, 
um, a very high inflammatory load in the background as well. So that's one procedure that just right away was a red flag for me. This hasn't been on the market long enough. It's in such close proximity to the thyroid. Most of my clients have thyroid issues. So obviously there's not going to be that many people that are going to be great candidates for it anyway. Uh, so there are some safer options for jawline improvements. And I'm not going to talk about brands and things like that, uh, but there are ways to actually modulate the muscle in the jowls, the chin, and also the platysmas in the neck uh, to help to give a little bit of a lift in a non-surgical way. And actually wrote a jawline paper on this very topic, because pretty much if you show up to a clinic and you have submental double chin fullness, they'll say, oh, let's do, you know, this injectable. But really my paper is about well, let's look at how can we adjust the, the bone, the fat, the soft tissue, improve the skin health first and foremost. So it's actually an algorithm to improve the jawline without potentially exposing you to things that are toxic. And of course, this isn't medical information. This is educational information only. Absolutely. So that is great. Thank you so much. You know, because again, I'm also on the same uh, page that, you know, first do no harm. And obviously, uh, if there is a safer way of improving things, why not? So that's great. Now, I know that you are also a biohacker and you obviously help improving slow uh, aging as well as skin health. So share some tips from biohacking tips for our clients, you know, who, who can improve their aging as well as skin. Well, actually, um, Dave Asprey, he's a friend of mine and I met him a number of years ago he is really who introduced me you know firsthand uh, into the world of biohacking because I really didn't know about it you know we don't learn about this stuff in our allopathic health trainings and things like that it's never talked about in fact it's kind of poo-pooed a little bit it's like what is that quackery biohacking what is this this is all gimmicks it is not I kid you not the clients that I work with that are aging the best are in fact biohackers. And when I was talking about making sure that your air, your water and your home environment are as toxic free as possible, limiting that toxic load, that's actually where a biohacking comes in. So I'm very pleased that you actually brought this up. I have a short list of my favorite biohacking options on my favorites page at rachelvarga.ca forward slash favorites. So that's where I have listed out my favorite technologies. I have red light therapy going all the time. I live in the Pacific Northwest. So I don't always get sunshine in the morning and evening. So I love red light therapies. So there's a couple of options at a, a couple of price points. You can spend a lot of money in biohacking. It's not just for the elite, if you will. There are some very uh, cost-effective red light options. Um, air purification. I actually have an air purifier. It's about this big. Um, I really like it. It's the hypo air germ defender and it's about $150 and it actually uses a UV catalytic converter. So UV to kill viruses, bacteria. It also pulls particulates out of the air. And so if you ever get a package from, you know, online and then you open it up and it smells like plastic, or you go in these big box stores, you're inhaling VOCs. So I have an air purifier in my office, in my bedroom, in my kitchen, and then I have a larger one, the, the boomerang. And uh, that one, again, is a UV type of filter that does more of like a larger living space. So when you're cooking, it's really important, but buildings breathe. So especially in the summertime, when there's more heat on the building itself, or you're using your heaters or depending on where you live. So in the Pacific Northwest, we have just horrible forest fires. So making sure your air quality is on point by using air filters. Most homes have mold. And so this will also help with that as well. I love getting your plumber to install a reverse osmosis water filtration system under the sink for both hot and cold. So you're not heating up your water in a kettle that's full of plastic and potentially exposing yourself to BPA. If you can do a whole home water purification unit, that's obviously ideal, but it's really expensive. Making sure also that your lighting in your home isn't LED and blue light. So you can actually change your lighting in your home to halogen, which is more of the complete spectrum of light. And so I am writing an academic article on EMFs. I will be writing one on air quality and also light quality because I actually postulate that the 
constant bombardment of the blue light from the LEDs is a contributing factor to hair loss itself because the blue light that we get from LEDs actually reaches three times deeper into the skin than the UVA on the cloudy days and the UVB on the sunny days. So our light is actually contributing to that too. So maybe we can uh, link up and uh, talk about how maybe this could be helpful for those with thyroid conditions to support hair growth. I, I love collaborating and EMFs are huge. So from a blood flow perspective, um, I work with a, a, a two different EMF clothing brands that I like. They're on my favorites page. I actually test everything EMF wise with my Electra smog reader here. It just, so I'm on my computer and it's at the top. Basically it's at the top here, which is just as high as my router. So if you're turning your router off at night, which you should be doing, um, sitting in front of your computer is just as bad as literally sitting in front of your router. So by wearing EMF protective clothing, it's a great way to actually shroud yourself and protect your vital organs. I actually sleep with my thyroid covered with um, a type of blanket. It's actually silver lined um, oversized blanket. So I have the hood over my eyes to help with dry eye. And then also over my thyroid so that I'm not getting that EMF exposure while I sleep. And it tremendously has improved my sleep to the effect that I've had a hundred percent sleep score <laughs> with my biohacking tracker, which is no small feat. Uh, but you do have to be able to test and not guess that what you're doing is working. So say, for example, sticking a little sticker on your phone or your laptop is not going to manage EMFs in your home at all. Um, EMF is like a soup in the home. So you're really better off making sure you're cleaning up dirty electricity. Uh, one of my clients, husband's is an electrical engineer. So I'm actually, um, I'm actually testing these things you can put in your outlets to help clean up your building's dirty electricity but really shrouding yourself, wearing EMF protective clothing um, just makes me feel so much better for mental clarity. I feel more like myself and not being on my phone all the time on social media is really, really important to the effect that I actually closed my Instagram a week and a half ago because I didn't like the idea of constantly being on this and you think it's free, but it's not. It, using your devices is actually making you sick. Sorry to be the Debbie Downer, but um, it is important to be aware of this. So we're limiting our time on devices and grounding. So free stuff for biohacking, just stand outside for 30 to 60 minutes a day, barefoot on the ground. That will help to restore your body's electromagnetic gradient, which will then have a downstream electrochemical gradient and hormone a regulatory impact as well. We just want to make sure we're doing everything we can to allow our body, mind, spirit, and energy to be running as smoothly as possible. So contacting the earth, who would have thought that's one of the best ways to restore good blood flow in the body. Absolutely. Wow. Those are like great tips, you know, like that was like Dave Asprey and kind of, you know, funneling everything he said into like, you know, five minute things that you kind of shared with us. So that was amazing. You know, I'm so thankful that, you know, you're sharing such great information for all the females that, you know, and even males, you know, like who kind of are using these products and things. So, so anything else that we have not covered that you would like to share before we end over here? Yeah, I would really like to emphasize the whole body, mind, spirit, energy aspect to kind of be in a whole human, a whole radiant human. So what I work with, my study, what lights me up, my purpose essentially is how can I be a more healthy, radiant, positive human? And how can I teach that? And how can I guide my clients through that process? Radiance is something really cool here. So if you have Hashimoto's, you have thyroid issues, you're like, oh, I have no energy because this is what happens, right? I have a number of friends with Hashimoto's. You put on weight, you, you don't have the energy that you want. You you might look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, I, I really like I'd love to lose that little extra bit a way that we can modulate our bodies is to really just give it the best chance possible to behave in the way that it wants to and we do have to live in slightly different ways especially being able to navigate modern world with technology and things like that and toxic exposure or quality or food isn't as nutrient dense as it once was so focusing on those body mind spirit energy aspects of yourself 
will allow your body to function in a way that if you think of egg beaters, your egg beaters of your body is like your defense system. It's going to be better able to kick off free radicals and oxidative stress triggers so that you can be your most grounded, centered, balanced, and aligned virgin. And I want to really emphasize the spiritual and energetic aspects to being healthy, being whole, being sovereign, and being radiant, having some type of spiritual practice to, you know, meditating, whatever that spiritual practice might be for you. And, you know, energy grounding practices, Qigong, yoga, all of that stuff. So I really get into the weeds on the various body, mind, spirit, energy practices to bring forth a higher level of radiance and beauty on my podcast, the Rachel Varga podcast, which I'm very excited to have you on to share with my audience, all the things that we need to do to support our thyroid. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing all that information. So before we let you go, can you share with our audience where they can find you? Absolutely. The best way to hang out with me is on audio only podcast content. Um, There's a lot of things that I really love to share, but unfortunately, a lot of the social platforms aren't allowing things that are helpful for you to hear very easily. So the Rachel Varga podcast is the best way to find me. And you can find all of my episodes at rachelvarga.ca forward slash blog. You can pick up a copy of my Unlocking Your Vitality ebook. It's like $14. It's my guidebook as to what my most radiant clients are doing. And also you can download my sophisticated skin cheat sheet here, where I kind of walk you through the basics for applying your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, how we can exfoliate the skin so that maybe what you're using right now, you can kind of hone in a little bit. And uh, so that's free in my rejuvenation planner. It's like an organization uh, tool for helping you plan out your retinal use, exfoliation, you know, in-clinic hydration treatments, uh, rejuvenation options. And also if you use DR and Shilgupta, you are going to be able to get 15% off of your one-on-one session with me, which you can book with me at rachelvarga.ca. I would love to meet with you, uh, work with you, share with me what your skin goals are. And then based on your lifestyle values, budget, all of that, I'll create a customized at-home routine. We'll talk about dermal rolling. We'll talk about skin supplements backed by third-party independent lab tested research, and maybe come up with an in-clinic plan as well to promote more collagen, help with uh, pigmentation concerns, a laxity, and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm like everyone's secret back, best friend in, in their back pocket uh, once they start to work with me. And I obviously offer ongoing email support and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm just showing up to help people learn how to be more radiant by taking notes out of my most vibrant clients' playbooks. Wow, thank you so much for you know being so generous with all these resources that you have created for everybody around. So it was really great having you over here with us. Thank you so much for sharing all this great information. Thank you for having me. And I can't wait to have you on my show as well. Absolutely. Yes, we'd love to be there.